I'm back. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video, Mr. Terry, as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, I'm so glad to be back with you guys. After a move that's put me in a new home and a new place, I am excited to get back to doing what I love, which is learning more about history and sharing that with you guys. All right, and what we're doing today is we're actually checking out a brand new channel. It's called Drawn of History. Now, what's especially cool about this channel is it's made by another history teacher here in the United States named Mr. Betts. And he has created a channel, um, history channel here, that has animations. And I'm especially, yeah, wanting to check out uh, a history teacher doing some really cool content here. And I hope we can find another awesome source for all our historical fun out here. So we're going to be checking this out. Now, the original link will be down below, so make sure you uh, check that out if you like this video. And hopefully you liked enough to want to sub and... Uh, like their video over there. And also down below, you'll find a few other links related to our channel. Our awesome Discord server is down there, as well as link to my gaming channel, which I hope to now here soon get back to putting up more content there. As well as some other things, some uh, history merch, if you'd like to show off, you know, now that we're back into school and things like that. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and get started. <music> Hola Inglaterra! Hello Spain, how are you? Oh, muy bien, especially after finishing my home renovations. Your what? Jesus! You like? I was worried it was a bit much, but then I don't know what to do with all this gold and silver from my New World colonies. So, <laughs> the, the 1500s belong to Spain. Um, that is because of their success in the New World, right? Um, starting with the, the, the Columbus voyage, we're supposed to get to, you know, India, of course, but one ends up coming across his entire new set of continents. <laughs> and through the conquistadors and through the, 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 um, the, the Spanish intervention there, made a fortune off of those things, um, off of those um, different empires and different locations that they took over. So the 15s kind of belongs to Spain when it comes to global power and dominance and wealth, at least in the West. Others, other, uh, other side, you got... Um, other side of things, of course, you got the, you know, India, you got the uh, Mughal Empire in India, you've got um, Ming Dynasty over in China. Um, but as far as European power goes in the East, that really belongs to Portugal in the 1500s. It's disgustingly opulent. You want to see disgusting? Check out France's casa. Are those beaver pelts? <laughs> see, thousands of them. Either that or a few dozen Wookiees. Hey, Pessoal, what are you guys yapping about? Oh, nada, Portugal. Just telling Inglaterra here how lucky he is to be a tiny, cloudy, isolated island. You two seem chummy. I thought you were over each other's throats over who was going to control South America. We had some help working out our differences. And you will stay on your side, and you will stay on your side, and no more of being a stupid, capiche? Capiche. Yeah, it's Portugal. So, so um, yeah, the, Spain and Portugal were the two nations that were really going for the global empire thing in the 1500s. Portugal was the first European nation to sail to India and get those trade routes going. Spain a little bit later and, you know, kind of accidentally coming across the Americas that way. Um, but then, yeah, since they were both Catholic nations, they were arguing about, hey, who should, like, have claims to which territories? And the Pope actually came in because they're both Catholic nations said, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to basically split the world into basic basically into hemispheres and with although there'll be a couple exceptions they'll um you know say all right portugal you're over here and india in the east okay you get that and then spain over in the west okay that's that but then you have like uh england and france who are a little bit late to the party they really start coming in later on um into this sort of game of world monopoly and getting control of these territories around the world what now Whoa, look who just bought themselves some ships, the Dutch and the Swedes. Yep. See, Beauty you're fine. better off here in your own little yard watering your little plants. I mean, come on, who's ever heard of a British empire? <laughs> just wait. Just wait. Great animations with seemingly every sea. I'm super impressed, like so far, you know, that you have these. These are uh, very high quality. I'm assuming they took a lot of time and a lot of, um, yeah, graphic design know how and stuff. Stuff I wish I could be better at, but uh, I think I'll leave it to the pros like this here. 
By the way, when England and France start to kind of join this up too, especially in North in, or in the Americas, just the, the Western Hemisphere, since Spain had so much dominance basically from what today would be Mexico and South, the efforts of the English and the French were around the Caribbean, um, but then also North America. And you saw earlier with the French with fur trapping, that was a big thing because you don't have uh, the uh, more tropical-like climates for the sugar plantations in mainland North America, which was the biggest profitable thing. But yeah, there's things like timber, but that you saw um, timber fishing and then uh, the like beaver pelts, which um, the thickness of their the pelts of uh, beaver and other animals was seen as really sought after in Europe, it became a big kind of fashion statement. So that was economically motivating for um, like France, for example. Going country in Europe scrambling to create new world colonies, the pressure was on for England to acquire some of their own. Original South Mario America Kart was already taken, one, but the way. North American Atlantic coast was still up for grabs. So in 1584, Sir Walter Raleigh established the first English colony. Alas, peep. I claim this land for England. What land? All I see is horizon. Uh, yes, well, whatever is beyond that horizon, that shall be England's and it shall be called Virginia. Virginia? But there's millions After her of royal highness, Queen Elizabeth, the Virgin Queen. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> so all of this theoretically became the Virginia colony. Now the tricky part, having people live there. Yep. In 1585, Daddy. Raleigh sent a group of colonists oh, to settle on Roanoke Island. Within a year, weather, famine, and hostilities with natives made it an utter failure. In 1587... Yeah, I'm not sure they'll get to it, but these original setters, it's all motivated by money. This was all, it's all about money and stuff like that. It's later on that you get, like, the Puritans and the the people that kind of famously go up a little bit more, more north the Massachusetts Bay um, area, that you get the people that were saying they were fleeing persecution like religious persecution these people are out to make money and it showed because these also people did not these people did not have survival skills they landed here and were just so focused on they were gonna like find gold and all this stuff that basic survival skills were non-existent and it's gonna be a rough go for these people then raleigh learning from his first failure sent another expedition to the same exact spot this second attempt not only failed <laughs> but disappeared off the face of the earth Croton. In 1606, the Virginia Company had a brilliant idea the, for a co the mysterious things. Let me go back. So this Roanoke Colony failed, and again, what was crazy was those that second group of people that came, that were going to Roanoke. They went there, and the whole place was abandoned. And it's kind of one of these myst uh, mysteries that they don't really know what happened to them. That they just like died out, or just like we don't know. It's it's an interesting um, history. It's part of. American history is like the, the mysterious disappearance of the Roanoke. They didn't leave much in the way, but one of the famous things that they they um, said that they had left was carved on a tree over here, the word Croatone, which might have, um, I think, uh, like referenced um, a local native group, um, if I remember right. And But again, super mysterious. The first attempted colony by the English in America was a massive failure and could have, could have, <laughs> put a whole stop on their whole efforts like for the future in America. Maybe England, you know, if they, they, they could have been reason to be like, all right, we're done with this area. In 1606, the Virginia company had a brilliant idea for a colony. How about not starting it at Roanoke? King James I granted them a royal charter and they were off. Led by Captain Christopher Newport, the Susan Constant, Godspeed, and Discovery set out for North America, arriving in the Chesapeake area in 1607. Still difficult this area. looks great! Easy access to the bay, defendable on three sides. Here, it's a swamp. So? Literally. It's literally the only land that the Indians won't live on. So? <laughs> That, that's not even a tree. It's a swarm of mosquitoes. Do you want us to settle at Roanoke? Because if you don't shut up, I'm settling us at Roanoke. <laughs> so they settled at what would be called Jamestown. So yeah, it's like they're only concerned about, okay, this is like got a uh, you know, big river access. Could make maybe ports or something. But the, the terrain is terrible. It was swampy and you'll see they can't grow anything. And it looks like it could be Roanoke version 2.0 here. And like they said, I mean, natives have been here for thousands of years. They don't even touch the area. But who would be in charge? The Virginia Company sealed and kept secret their choices for the colony's leaders, partially to make sure that those not chosen to lead couldn't back out and also because they loved reality dating shows. Yeah. And the final rose for the Jamestown Leadership Council goes to... <laughs> 
John Smith? Me? Not you, Don Smith. <laughs> Considering John Smith had been confined to quarters for trying to incite a mutiny on the journey over, this was awkward. I guess you turds are gonna have to untie me now. I didn't know and that it was a good John thing Smith. they did. John Smith was important for establishing a fairly really? good relationship with the local Powhatan Indians, though there were occasionally language and cultural barriers. Please don't kill me, please don't kill me, please don't kill me, please don't kill me, please don't Father, what did you do to him? Nothing, Pocahontas. I just did the whole I got your nose trick and he started freaking out. <laughs> Almost immediately, the Jamestown settlement faced serious problems. See, these settlers were here to strike it rich, which left little time for other concerns like, I don't know, Eating. food. Yeah. Hey, John, uh, are you Surviving. gonna eat all of that? Yes, that's why it's on my plate. Uh, okay, it's just I was out looking for gold all day and I don't have anything to I'm eat. Tired. Okay, give me some gold and I'll give you some food. <laughs> I didn't find any gold, nobody yeah. has. So can I get some food? You can get out of here, that's what you can get. Yo, John, let me get a bite of your supper. <laughs> no, it's not my fault you were looking for gold all day. Hey, hey, I wasn't looking for gold. I was hunting for beaver. What do you think of it? Yeah, Great looking though. pelt. Why don't you eat the animal it was attached to? Exactly. Oh, no, no, I didn't catch this beaver. I wouldn't even know where to look. You can see the problem here is, again, these people are all there for the money. They just think they're going to show up and then just getting this stuff is going to solve all their problems. When... They're living in a virtual wilderness and they they don't know what to do. Like they don't, they don't, I mean, they, I don't know if it's they, like some people say like, oh, they're lazy or something like that. But I don't know. It's just like, they're so demented in their head that they understand like the, the basic needs that they're going to need. And that's of course what John Smith is going to get famous for is actually getting them settled. But you saw he had issues with the local Powhatan nation. Um, because one of the things they had to do and he felt they had to do sometimes was raid like you know raid for food and stuff like that but then eventually getting the people to have to work together and start to understand like hey we got to do these other things that aren't just these money-making ventures if we're going to even survive traded for it with some indian guy now let me get some cornbread so john smith had to yep. enact a new policy hey john don't can work, i borrow a cup eat. of sugar read a freaking sign donnie under john, john smith's smith. leadership james sound started to maybe not thrive, but at least survive, which is quite That's an accomplishment. So one can only imagine the satisfaction over the colony's progress Smith felt as he slept under autumn stars in a rowboat. And then it blew up. Yeah, that happened. Smith had to return to England for treatment in October of 1609 and never returned to Virginia again. But Jamestown would be okay, right? Well, I mean, it does become successful, so it's going to be okay somewhat. Um, Roanoke, you got your first English attempt, but then you've got Jamestown is the first actual successful town in America, um, for the English in, in the Americas. The bad times, yep. That winter, the settlement was ravaged by lack of food, rampant diseases, hostile native neighbors, and bad leadership. So it got awesome. so bad that, well... <sighs> Edward, I'm so sorry to hear about your wife. Oh yeah, thanks mate. It's, it's horrible. Let me know if you need help burying her. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. That Cannibalism. won't be... Edward, what are you eating? Oh, we gotta get out of here. In June 1610, the decision was made to abandon Jamestown. Get that? The first town in... <laughs> English town in America. Led to cannibalism. They had to start eating their dead. Uh, I know that at first they were like trying to, they ate like bark and then like <laughs> trying to eat leather. I think they started eating their horses or something like that. And then finally, yeah, there's evidence of um, cannibalism too. So them eating their own dead. It appeared as if England had another Roanoke on its hands. That was until the fleeing ship crossed paths with the new arriving governor of Virginia, Lord Delaware. <sighs> Lord, Delaware, we're so glad to see you. Jamestown, it's a graveyard, a tomb, a curse. We barely escaped with our lives. Kindly move your ship aside so we can return to English civilization. Why aren't you moving? Oh, fart. 
Between Delaware and a new charter that allowed colonial leaders to rule with an iron fist, Jamestown again shifted from dying on the vine to this might work. This change was also helped by colonist John Rolfe. Psst, yeah. you wanna try something good? What do you have? Tobacco. Ugh, I've had Spanish tobacco. Not impressed. Oh man, that stuff's skunk. Try my blend. Is it, is it economically safe? Pleasant, sweet, strong. Can I get some more? Sure, but only the first one's free. Who is that? Pocahontas. Her? That's Pocahontas. Grown up. Or at least she was Pocahontas. We kidnapped her to force peace with her father, and since then she's converted to Christianity and taken the name Rebecca. Oh, please be 18. So Jamestown <laughs> and other emerging settlements became all about growing the tobacco that you're- Yeah, that's the relationship that, that gets famous, you know. It wasn't with John Smith uh, in Pocahontas. John Smith was an adult. She was just a child then, but yeah, John Rolfe having this. I didn't know that she had um, done so much in kind of converting to English ways by the time her and John Rolfe um, started getting together. I, I didn't know that. I thought he was maybe part of that process. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting there. But so the, the tobacco thing, you know, this still, this whole venture is still about making money, specifically with cash crops of some kind. They're not finding the gold and stuff they need, but they need to find something else. It's not good just to have a colony there just to have people live and, and whatever. It's about making money, right? And when tobacco got introduced to this area, that becomes the thing that economically saves Jamestown. And to be honest, is going to be the economic foundation for what's what will eventually be the United States of America. It's going to be built upon that because that's the first real profitable crop they started getting. Cotton comes on later and things like that, but really it's about tobacco. Europeans were fiending for setting up the foundation for a southern economy built on cash crops that would never be a problem in the future. The Wait, what? Yet still, no one really wanted to come to the colony. It was super expensive to get there and for most meant never returning home. The Virginia company would have to get creative. Are you tired of not owning land and living in dirty old London? Can you afford passage across the Atlantic? Do you have a reasonable resiliency against malaria? Then come to Virginia. Under the new headright system, you'll receive 50 free acres just for getting here. But wait, there's more. You'll also receive 50 additional acres for every person whose passage you pay for. A man, that's 50 more acres. A woman, 50 more acres. Child, 50 deal. more acres. They don't even have to survive the trip. You'll still get 50 more <laughs> acres. Excuse me, what do we get? You get to shut up. <laughs> That's what you get. But seriously, who were these people being brought over and why would they even come? Sure. So you see, it's boys, a good, it's, so it's a good point. Like, why risk any of this if it doesn't seem like it's just going to be an easy, like, just victory for you? You know what I mean? Easy, easy, like, uh, um, return on investment. But, I mean, there are a lot of reasons to do it. I mean, you've got a Europe in general that doesn't provide the economic mobility that a lot of people might seek. I mean, when it comes to like land ownership, for example, right in, in Europe, you know, Europe has been, had been, has been feudal forever and land ownership is by family and you can't just go get new land. It's like you inherit it or it's insanely expensive, but like over across overseas, it's plentiful. And if that's a big motivator for you, then for, you know, getting into land, then Europe is not where you want to be. This this is where you want to be because it's cheap, and they're basically giving it away, um, at least in their eyes. Of course, <laughs> we got to understand that this land is still lived on by countless amount of Native Americans, but that's going in total disregard here, but it's going to be an issue, of course. In this indentured servant contract, you get free passage go. to Virginia, free accommodation, steady work, and free land when you're done. Bugger off, you wanker. Work it off. Yeah, so, I mean, okay, so, like, before this, you know, it'd be like if you're wealthy. Sometimes you can be materially wealthy but not necessarily own land, and that would be an easy way because you could finance yourself, go and get this land immediately. But, again, how do you get across, you know, the ocean if you don't have any money? You don't have any capital. You don't have any money to start with. There's your indentured servitude program, which is basically you sell yourself into um, uh, basically a labor contract. They'll pay for you to come over and house you and stuff like that and then when you're done 
Um, contracts maybe be like seven years or so. It might depend on maybe the deal you make. But at the end of it, then you get a plot of land. So it's a way for someone else to basically invest in you, use you as a worker, and then you're going to get that land. But it's, it's, it's meant to cover that, that uh, upfront money that you would need to make a voyage like this. Skyrim. Hey, welcome to Virginia. But these weren't the only newcomers to the colony. In 1619, the first boatload of women arrived at Jamestown, which up until this point had been a total sausage party. Hey, ladies. That same Why? year, the first ship with enslaved Africans arrived as well. Oh, uh, Started pretty early. This is awkward. Lastly, in 1619, the General Assembly, the first representative assembly in the colonies and what would later become the House of Burgesses was formed. First this Local was government. the birth of democracy in America. It's so restrictive. You gotta be this and this man and money and religion and all that stuff. So... Yeah, it's it's pretty elite when it comes to re actual representation. But that, I mean, that's going to be a mainstay for even after the United States will be created with like land ownership and male voting and stuff like that. That doesn't um, leave for centuries almost. What I tell you, democracy. The Virginia colony began to find its stride, especially after the crown kicked the Virginia company out and made it a crown colony in 1624. Well, yeah, St they're like, oh, wait, this thing is profitable. Um, yeah, we're going to step in. Still, there was a widening divide between the classes that would come to a head in 1676. All right, boys, our servitude is over. We got our land and what is this? This land's less fertile than Queen Elizabeth. Wait, do you hear that? Oh, come geez. on. Right hey, now, chief. I'm not a chief. I'm a werewance. Whatever. How's about you guys sod off and let us have this land? We've literally been here for thousands of years. Go die of dysentery. No. Hey, Governor Berkeley, do us a solid and kick the Indians off the good western land. Aha. Uh -huh. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, no. I live in the Tidewater and not some cement parking lot. This is not a problem that concerns me. And if you don't like it, take it up with the House of Burgesses. Mm. Oh yeah, you turds can't vote. Yeah. I have a plan. You should wage war against those Indians. Nathaniel Bacon? Aren't you part of the elite yourself? Yes. Well, um, I brought booze. No! <laughs> <laughs> they actually did it. Bacon, do you really think your rebellion will actually help you get my job? All right, we massacred the Indians. What's next? I don't know. Burn down Jamestown? No! Oh, jeez. <laughs> Brothers, I vow to you here and now, we will build a new Virginia where the common man, and myself, will rule, never again, oppressed by the... Uh, my stomach feels weird. Ah. <laughs> did he just oh. poop himself to death? <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, fart. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys are still here? Why don't you go do something productive, like subscribe to Drone of History, or, or check out this video over here, or be like these Patreon heroes. Boy, they can get it done. As for me, I'm taking a nap. I mean, come on, a bow can't explode twice while I'm taking this. <laughs> All right, holy crap. This is so good. Do we have our on our hands here, like the... American history version of oversimplified here. This channel's new and and, and uh um <laughs> it was so good. I, I loved it. It was I learned so much. I used to teach I, I taught US history for the first about five years of my career. I've been teaching for ten years. And um but now I don't. I teach all world history classes and it's it's enjoyable for me to to like go back and go over some of the stuff that um i used to teach and i used to i used to love teaching this stuff but then i learned a whole bunch more about a lot more details about these early years and with jamestown and all that this was really really informative and i could tell it could be very very useful for you guys that are um like in high school for example and taking u.s history classes or junior high school 
and because there's a ton of great info here. So this is this is awesome. We may have a new, I think, contender for uh, upper tier uh, history channel here, especially for animated ones that are that are a lot of fun. So I I was you know I didn't know what to expect here at all um, when I uh, had this shared with me. But I'm, I'm really, really impressed and looking forward to more of this. This is one of the first videos, maybe I think one of the first videos they did, um, which was just a few weeks ago. So make sure, okay, link is down below, that you uh, go check out the original video and make sure to um, subscribe to this channel, Draw on History. I think, you know, if it's, if it's anything like this going forward, um, I think I think we got a winner here, so I think this is this is gonna be great. So let's definitely support that. Let's get the, even though you watch my video, go over there, give them the view, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and um, I definitely will will like to go back to this because I have done a lot of world history topics, and I think for high quality, you know, with with the humor and stuff for American history, I want to make sure I'm dabbling in some of that too. All right, well, awesome. Um, again, link down below, links to other stuff down there, my gaming channel. I'm gonna hopefully start get back to get back to doing stuff on there, Discord server. Um, some other links to some fun history-related stuff down below. All right, and with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.